How to save money for investment. This video answers a very simple yet a profound question that lingers in the minds of most people who would wish to start up a business. And that is, where do I get capital to invest? And by capital, they mean money. Where do I get money to start a business? Well, let's face it. The real reason you do not have money to invest is because the inlet of your money is the same as the outlet of that money. Or worse, the outlet is bigger than the inlet. So whatever comes in, goes out, and you remain with nothing. And this video is going to help you fix just that. By the end of this video, you would have devised a means of generating your own starting capital and you'll be able to start that business. So make sure that you watch this video until the end. But first, if you are new here, make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss on any of these videos. And if you have already subscribed, welcome back. Thank you for coming. My name is Dr. Emmanuel Amukun, the founder of Marvel's Dental Hospital. Now, in order to find money to start up a business, you need to save that money. The real question is, how do you save this money? And the very first thing that you need to remember is that saving starts with the decision to save. And you need to determine in advance how much money you need to save that will be enough for you to start that business. And once that is done, then you'll start putting it aside each and every day. This video gives you eight steps that you are going to take to save up that money that you need to start your own business. And the very first one is to train your mind to save. Saving money is a state of the mind. The good part is that the mind is powerful but can be trained to achieve what you want to achieve. All you need is to make a decision to save. And the only way you can train your mind to continue saving is to exercise personal discipline. And when you do this long enough, which experts say that it takes about 21 days, it becomes a habit. Once you have developed a saving habit, then step one is complete. Then you move to step two. Step two, as you might have already heard from somewhere else, it involves paying yourself fast. Now, most of us think that when you work and you get paid, you are the one who is actually getting paid. Unfortunately, that is not exactly true. Most of us, when we work and we get that income, we are actually working to pay the owners of the grocery shops, the owners of the schools, the owners of petrol stations, the border borders we use for moving around, telecom companies on the data and the airtime that we use for calls, and the biggest one of them all is the government. Because most of us, the money we earn is deducted to pay the government even before we get that money. So you are paying everyone else except yourself. So paying yourself means that you have to decide in advance that out of the money that you earn, you will put aside a particular percentage into your savings account and you are never to touch that money until it is time to open up your business. And if you earn through the bank, it would even be advisable that you open a savings account and then you place a debit order such that each time that money lands onto your account, a particular percentage is automatically transferred to your savings account even before you start withdrawing it. And what I can assure you is that if you are just beginning to do this, it is going to be very, very uncomfortable because it means you have to adjust your lifestyle. My best advice is that start with what you can manage, whether it is 1% or 2% or 3%, just start with that. And then as you get comfortable with that, you can actually progress to higher percentages, but start with what you can manage at the moment. And then later on, you can increase this percentage to 10%, 20%, or even 30%, depending on your income. And one thing I want to assure you is that 
as you increase this amount that you think that you're going to miss, eventually you are going to discover that you can actually live without that money you are putting aside. And once that happens, the trend will continue. And before you know it, you have enough money to start that business that you have always wanted. And you'll be able to leave that job and start your own business. Once you are done with the decision of how much you are going to save, then you have completed step two. If you are finding any value in this video so far, please make sure that you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please make sure that you do that right now. Smash that red subscribe button and join the family. Then we move to step three. Step three basically involves planning your expense. Please don't be like some people who leave their homes in the morning with say 50,000 or 100,000. Then they come back later in the evening with nothing in the pocket. But if you ask them that, where did all that money go? They don't know. The reason is they spend on things without planning for them. And usually it is small, small things which they cannot remember. But remember, those small, small things will eventually add up and become big in terms of expenditure. In fact, there are even people who don't know where their whole salary goes. Somebody works from January to December, they have used up all their salary, but if you ask them exactly on what, they are not able to pinpoint that it is this. So here is how you should go about planning your expenses. First, you need to identify all the sources of your expenses, what takes your money, and all the sources of your income. Not them down. And when it comes to expenses, if you are a married couple, you might want to consult each other on this before you make the final decision. Or better still, work on it together as a family. Once you are done with identifying what brings in the money and what takes out the money, then you should create an expected expenditure on each item. Once you do that, then you will need to get a notebook to track all your expenses on a daily basis. I know it is going to be somehow cumbersome, but if you are really serious about getting capital for your business, you should be willing to do this. After you have tracked your expenses, let's say at the end of the month, then you will have to review your planned expenses versus the actual expenses. After this, you are likely to find that the two don't match. Once that happens, that means that you might want to adjust your expenses. Or alternatively, if it is within your means, adjust your income. Once you do this, this exercise is going to help you to cut out all the waste. And once you have seen the money that remains after cutting the waste, this money, which I'm going to call unspent money, should move directly to your savings account never to be removed until you are ready to invest it. In step four, we want to ensure that we do not borrow any money. Borrowing money is only advisable if you are going to use the money to generate profit, and that profit must be higher than the interest you are going to pay on that money. Otherwise, borrowing money to consume, to use on consumables, it's just the same as you taking...